Mercy, aka Ann Loam, and welcome to my studio. Today is class number two for Let's Begin Painting with Acrylics, and today we're going to do color theory. So you are going to need the following items to do this class, and then I'll zoom in so that you can see better what I'm doing. Now, if you have not seen class number one, you're going to want to go and check it out right here and it will give you all of the equipment that you will need to follow along with this class. You don't need exactly everything, but close proximity is good enough. So let's get started. You're going to need your five colors. So you're going to need titanium white and Mars or carbon black which we're going to use later on in the class, and you're going to need your three primary colors. If the brand of paint that you are using has primary red, primary blue, and primary yellow, Liquitex Basics does have those colors, pick those up. If the, co if the brands that you are using do not have that, you will need a medium toned red, which is usually cadmium red medium, ultramarine blue, and a cadmium yellow medium. Those will be close enough to the primary colors for you to be able to follow along. You will need paper towel. In the first class, I told you you were going to need containers. So you can either have two containers with water in it. I have my painting container, which is split into one for cleaning and one for fresh water. You can use old Tupperware containers or yogurt containers. It's perfectly fine. You're going to want the brushes and the palette knives that we talked about in class number one. We're not going to be using all of them, but you'll be able to choose the ones that's most comfortable for you. You're also going to need the canvas paper that I told you about, and you don't need the canvas panels. However, I forgot to tell you to get palette paper. Now, you don't have to use palette paper. You can use a plastic plate. You can use... Um, a craft sheet, a nonstick craft sheet. You can use some wax paper uh, taped down, or if you purchased the canvas panels, you can just not open them and use the back of this as your palette for now until we actually start using the canvas panels inside. So I apologize for not telling you about palette paper slash some alternatives to palette paper but basically you need a place to be able to mix your paints that's going to be easy to clean up and a plastic plate works perfectly now today we are going to be doing color theory so we're going to be doing uh, color wheels we're going to be doing a few different kinds and these two color wheels, the links are in the dibbly doo This is a color wheel from www.watercolorpainting.com. They don't exist anymore, but it's their material, so I do want to shout out about it. And then there's this blank color wheel that you can print off as well. This one I couldn't find an attribution to. I'm not sure which organization put it out but it's really good because it's very simple. So we're going to be working with these two pieces of paper, so make sure you print those out before we start. So you're going to need one piece of canvas paper. Now, canvas paper is basically a textured paper, so it's textured to feel like canvas but it is made from paper instead of cotton, like a canvas fabric. This particular one is 115 pounds. It's probably not quite double the thickness of a regular bond paper, but it's also going to take to the paint really well. 
Okay, let me zoom in because you don't need to see all of this. We're going to concentrate just on here. And I'm going to put my fake palette over here. So basically what you want to do is, actually we'll do that here. We're going to put the paint on this, my fake palette. Actually, I have real palette paper. I'll show you what it is. Um, it's a little bit pricey, which is why you don't have to go buy it, but I'll show you what it is. This is palette paper. Basically what it is, is a piece of paper that has a waxy, you can see that waxy shine on it so that the paints don't sink into it. And then what you do is when you're done painting, you rip it off and throw it out so that you don't have to clean a plate. Um, I think it'll be easier than to see this. So I'll use the palette paper just so that you're not confused about the canvas panel. So we're going to work with the primary colors first. So you're going to need to get some color on whatever you're using as a palette. Now, if you have tubes, this is easy because you just have to squeeze it out. I'm going to say about a tablespoon is good for now because we can always add more later. Now, I also have these big jars. Ooh, Ooh I've never opened this before. This is a brand new jar. Cool. Scrape that off and save as much paint as possible. So for this, you'll want to take one of your palette knives. This one is a good one. And scoop out a little bit. Put that down. You can wipe the excess off on your paper towel to clean your knife. This particular blue is very highly pigmented. It's going to stain your brushes and it's going to stain the white plastic. Um, when you wash it, if there's still a stain, don't worry about it. It doesn't mean it's not clean. This particular blue stains really easily. And then the same for the yellow. I'm just going to take out a little scoop of that and put that here. And again, wipe the excess off on the paper towel. So those are the three primary colors. What that means is there are no other colors that can make up these colors. These three colors in paint are the basis of all other colors. So we're going to learn about them today and we're going to learn about how to mix them together and how they work together. So let's get out our color palette. Here's the color wheel. So primary is yellow, red, and blue. Those are these colors here. Every single other color is made from these primary colors. And that's why they're called primary. They're the first colors. The secondary colors are when you mix these ones together. So when you mix red and blue together, when you mix red and yellow together, and when you mix yellow and blue together, you get the three secondary colors. And that's what we're going to explore right now. When you're using your brushes with acrylic, the first thing you want to do is when you open your pack is you want to just separate the bristles. The brushes are clean, but for packaging and shipping, sometimes they'll put a starch product in it that keeps them stiff so they don't get damaged. It's just a dry powder and you can just fluff it out. Then when you're using um, acrylic paints, 
you want to make sure for most techniques that the brush is damp not soaking wet so that it's dripping water you just want it to be damp so you dip it in your brush in your water I'm sorry your clean water and then you just dab it on a paper towel and you now have a nice damp brush there's no water coming out so let's explore this you can do your color mixing with a brush you can also do your color mixing with a palette knife whichever you're more comfortable with we're going to be doing lots of color mixing in the next hour so you can try both and see which one you prefer I'm going to start with a palette knife so let's take a little bit of red here and we're going to add a little bit of yellow to it so we're going to get the secondary color now this red is very strong and this yellow is a little bit transparent so sometimes you need more yellow than you need red to get the middle color sometimes it works 50 50 other times it does not so I am getting kind of a, a peachy orange bit more red and now I have a nice pile of orange I don't know if you can see that really well let me there we go it's a nice orange now different reds and different yellows will give you different oranges if I was using a lemon yellow this would be a lighter color if I was using a lighter red, I would also have a lighter color. So there we go. We have a nice pile of orange. Acrylic paints dry a half a shade darker. Oops, there we go. A half a shade darker when they dry, especially dark colors. This dark blue will dry really uh, almost a full shade darker so this will dry a little bit darker so if you want it to be lighter let me just add a little bit more yellow to it and you will get the color of orange that you want there we go we have a nice orange wipe that off on my paper towel So if we take yellow, and I'm probably going to need some more, I'm going to do it this way this time. I'm going to add the yellow, and I'm just going to add a little bit of blue. This blue is very intense. It's highly pigmented. When I mix this, I should have added the yellow first and then added the red, but I got too excited about showing you what was going to happen, and I forgot. You should always... Uh, make a pile with the lighter color first and then add the darker color and see even with that little bit of blue this has gotten quite green even though it was a little bit so there we have a nice green color I think I'm going to add a little bit more blue a little bit mossy for me it's a little bit too yellow but that's okay that's what this is about this color mixing now you won't be able to get all shades of green using this yellow and this blue um, because there's a plethora there's tons of different yellows out there this is just going to give you the basic colors um, I will show you in a later class what it looks like when you add different yellows and different blues together we'll do some experimentation so now we have a green and I need to put some more yellow out we're not going to have it for our color wheel I'm just gonna take a 
whack a yellow there and add some yellow to the palette. And then we're going to mix the red and the blue. Both of these are very intense colors, but the blue is more intense than the red, so I'm gonna use less blue than red. And blue and red makes purple. There we go, we're getting a nice dark purple. Beautiful. It looks really dark on the camera, but once we spread it out on the paper, it will look even better. All right, so we have a purple. Let me zoom out for a second. There we go. So these are our colors, red, blue, yellow, which are our primary colors, and orange, purple, and green are the secondary colors. And that is shown here on this color wheel. So we have yellow, red, and blue, and orange, green, and violet, or purple. So we are now going to create a color wheel together on this piece of paper. I'm going to just set aside my palette for a second. We're going to be working on this. So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can either use one brush and rinse it out in between, which leads me to caution you to start with your lighter colors first, or you can use a whole bunch of different brushes you can um, choose whichever way you prefer, but I'm gonna use just one brush and I'm gonna start with my lightest color first. So I'm gonna start with yellow. So we're just gonna paint this in. Don't worry about hitting all of the lines. We just want a nice swatch of yellow. It's beautiful. Now, I'm going to show you here, when you clean your brush, you want to make sure that you scrape the brush against the bottom of your container and get out all the color before you dab it again, all right, so it, that your colors don't mix. And then I'm going to do the orange. So the orange goes here. Remember you're using a damp brush just to help spread the paint a little bit. There we go. Now on the screen, I'm noticing that it's a little bit redder than it is orange, but on my paper, it's fairly orange. And again, rinse really well, get the paint out, dab, dab. So as you can see, my brush is mostly clean but as we keep using the darker colors, it'll start getting stained, especially with the blue. So then we have green over here, a nice mossy green, which is beautiful. That is fantastic. Clean your brush. Dab, dab. Then we're gonna go with the red right here. So now that the red is beside the orange, you can see that they're actually two different colors. 
There we go, we got the nice red. And clean, clean, clean. Dab, dab. And then we're gonna go with the blue. Fantastic, clean, 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 and dab, dab, and finally the purple or violet. Which is very dark, but that's okay. I'm going to show you how to change that later. The important thing is, is to get the basic color strategies so you understand which ones go together. So there you go. Where's my pen? Oh, I have a pencil here. So this is a primary, and this is a primary, and this is a primary, and green is a secondary, orange is a secondary, and purple is a secondary. So now we're going to talk about complementary colors. So complementary colors are the colors that sit opposite on the color wheel. So yellow, the complementary of yellow is purple. So basically, whichever primary color you're dealing with, the complementary is the, the two other primaries. So for red, the complementary is green because it's yellow and blue. And for blue, it's orange because it's yellow and red. So those are the things you need to understand. Which three are the primary colors? Yellow, blue, red. Which three are the secondary colors? Green, orange, and purple. And what are the opposites of the primary. So yellow is purple, blue is orange, and red is green. If you can keep that straight in your head, you will be well informed on how to do some color mixing in the future. And I'll explain that later on. But basically what you're going to do is if something is too orange, you can add blue to it to tone it down. And if something is too green, you can add a little bit of red to it to tone it down. So you'll be able to add in, you have to know what your complementary colors are so you, you know how to correct your color mixing. Okay, now we're gonna fill in these other ones. These are called tertiary colors. So primary being first, secondary being second, tertiary which means third. It's the third color selection. And basically these are the colors that fall in between the primaries and the secondary colors. So what I want you to do is I want you here to take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green and mix them together to get the tertiary color between them. And it is called yellow green. It doesn't really have another name. Sometimes it can be called olive green, but it doesn't have an official name. It's just called yellow green so that you know where it sits on the color wheel. Clean, clean, clean. And we want to do between here. So green and blue. So we want a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. And we're going to mix them together into a bluish green. There you go. How's that? And then you just keep going all the way around. I'm going to do this in fast forward. And you can follow along or pause the video and do it and then catch up with me. There you go. 
oh, your very first color wheel has been filled in and it's labeled. So all of these other colors are tertiary. You can put a T if you want. But the most important ones are the primary and the secondary. These are the ones we're gonna be talking about the most. All right, okay. So I just wanted you to see that you can see that my brush, even though it's clean, is starting to stain. Don't worry about it. Your brushes will all be lovely shades of the rainbow by the time you are done this course. I did want to talk a little bit about the paints that you have out. Acrylic paints dry fairly quickly. So um, there's a few different techniques that you can use, but the cheapest technique is to have a little spray bottle and just have it on mist and just mist them a little bit and just to keep them uh, slightly damp on the top, it will prevent uh, a crust from forming. Uh, acrylic paints dry from the outside in, so sometimes you can even peel the skin off and it's still good inside. I just wanted you to know that you can do that. There's a thing called um, a stay wet palette. So basically it's a palette that has um, like a sponge in it that you dampen and it has a lid and it keeps it wet. But don't go investing into expensive products until you are sure that acrylic painting is for you. There's always a dollar store cheap workaround in the interim. All right, so now that we have done color wheels, you're gonna keep this as a reference because now we're going to do some color values. This particular uh, paint um, palette, sorry, this particular canvas paper has two colors. It's beige on one side and white on the other. If yours is two-toned, use the white side. It's easier to see the differences in the colors and it won't tone your colors. So here's what we want to do. We want to introduce some white. We want to introduce some white. So I'm going to take some white and put it on my palette paper just a little bit. And we're going to talk about color values. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush for this. Whichever brush you're most comfortable with. Dampen it, dab dab. Here's what we want to do. Let's start with red. So red. I'm just gonna put that red right there. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of white with the red. And we're going to get progressively lighter. So let's do that again. Let's do it with blue. You want to start with the full color. There we go. And then I'm just going to 
add a little bit of white so it makes it like a, sh a half a shade or a shade lighter and then a little bit more white and a little bit more white that did not tone down the way I wanted to let's be a little bit more scientific about this I'm used to just adding white but you might not be because you guys are beginners so I need to think about this all right so we're gonna add some blue here we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna take full blue Clean that off. I'm going to add I'm going to add Nope. I have to think about this differently. I've never had to think about it this way before. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the blue onto a larger surface so I can mix more variations. Let's get the white out. Okay, so this is full blue. This is no blue. Let's put some white and some blue in here and mix that up. Okay. Then I have some of this blue and some of the full blue and that should give me a shade up. And it does. Okay, and then take some of this blue and some more white and it will give me a shade lighter than that one. And it does. All right. Okay, let's do that. Let's go with full blue. clean off my brush then the next shade of blue clean off my brush then the next shade of blue and then the next shade of blue and then just wait there okay let's do that again together that was uh, that was a good learning experience for me I've never had to think about it that way I just add in white so when you add white to a color it's a tint when you add black to a color it's a shade and when you add black and white or gray to a color it's called a tone so that's why a lot of times these are called value or tonal charts because you're changing the value of the original color by adding white or black or gray to it we're just going to worry about white right now and create some tints so let's do that with all of the colors I want you to be able to have a chart to start that has the four tints. So 
So that's what we're going to do together now. So we have white. Let's do yellow. So we have yellow, full yellow. Now this yellow is really transparent, which means you can see through it. As opposed to opaque, where it means it covers up the back, that you can't see light through it. So transparent means light goes through it. Opaque means light does not go through it. And I'll show you the difference. Um, probably when I'm doing highlighting and shading, I'll show you that. But for now, let's just worry about our shades. So a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow, and we'll go in the middle. And then we will see how I automatically started mixing with my brush. That is so funny. And a little bit more yellow. So this will be a little bit of a darker shade. And then we'll take this one here and add a little bit more white to it. Then let's go with the next shade down. And this probably will be hard to see because it's yellow. And then the next shade down. And then the next shade down. And then white. Oops, which had a little bit of blue in it. That's okay. So we're going to do that for all of the rest of the colors. So we now have the three primary colors. We're going to do the three secondary colors. I'm going to do it in fast forward so that you can see the results, but I'm going to be doing it exactly the same. I'm going to be mixing with white. And I'm gonna use my palette knife to do that. great thing about acrylic paint is you can clean it up with water. There we go. Okay, let's do green, orange, and purple in fast forward. There you go, purple, orange, green, yellow, blue, and red. Now you have some space at the bottom here, and we are going to use black and white and do a larger, oops, of course I just spread paint on that, but that's okay, these are just practice sheets. We're going to try to do a larger tone tonality with black and white. So let me clean this up and we'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to put a, a little bit of black, and again, you can do this on a plastic plate, or, well, let me see if I can scoop that white out there without grabbing any blue. Well, there's a little bit of blue in there. And some of that white. Okay, 
So what we're going to do is the exact same thing. We're just going to do more variations of it. So we want to start out with black on one side. And white on the other. And then right in the middle, we want to do kind of a 50-50. We get a nice gray. There we go, that's a nice gray. right in the middle. Nice gray. So we're going to add some to there and some to there. We'll add a little bit of black to this one. So it's now a shade darker. here. So it's lighter than that, darker than that. And this one we want to add some white to. Just grab that and mix it with that. That one goes in here. I'm going to mix a little bit more of the white with this. And I'm going to get a shade in here. And then I'm going to mix, whoops, clean my brush. I'm going to mix what's left of this with some of this. And there we go. Take a little bit more black and a little bit of this. And that one goes in there. And it was a little bit of this and a little bit of this. Gives us what goes in there. There we go. So you want nine spots. These ones you can just have four and white, and these ones you'll have eight and white. It doesn't have to be pretty. You just have to be able to understand how tonal values work. Well, this, sorry, shade. This is shade values. This is tint values, and then black and white together make tones. But basically, it's about the values. You want to be able to understand how you can mix colors up to make different colors and how you can mix white to tint them and black to shade them. Now, let's just do a little experiment here. Let's take some orange. This is just an experiment. A little bit of orange and add just like the smallest amount of black. Oh my, that was way too much. Okay, let's add a, a ton more orange to that. I forgot how dark the black is. Mars black is very potent. What I've gotten here is in a very dark, orangey, burnt orange. Let's try red. Let's try red with like a tiniest little bit of black. There was too much black last time. Just a tiny bit. And 
as you get used to the paints that you buy, like I usually use the same types of paints all the time, and then you get used to how much you need to mix with the black to darken it. See, this? that's more like a brick red now. See, it's red, but it's darker. It's orange, but it's darker. Let's do one more. Let's do the green. But we're going to go super heavy on the green. And again, like just the smallest amount of black. See how that goes from kind of a moss green to almost a forest green. See that? So that's what we want you to play with this week. So Gina, your homework is to print off these two sheets, make the color wheel, mark which ones are primary and secondary. And I want you to make a little note up here that says which color is the opposite of the other, which is complementary. All right, just a little note so that I know that you know. Because I can't do tests. And then I want a tonal, sorry, a value, four values and white, and then eight values of black and white, and then just play a little bit adding the black. Um, usually when I'm painting and I'm trying to darken something, I don't use black. Black is very harsh. So if I'm trying to darken a color, I'll start sometimes with a complementary color, which we'll play with a little bit when, next time when we do uh, highlighting and uh, shading. But I wouldn't necessarily add black. If I was trying to darken this orange, I might add a little bit of blue or maybe even a purple before I would use a really harsh black but that is what shades are is using black so I wanted to show you how to do that so that's Gina's homework and anyone who's following along play with your paints um, it would be great if you could have palette paper so that you could make a very large mess but if you have plastic plates and you can wash it out in between maybe you could just work with one color at a time when you're doing this and then give it a little bit of a rinse remember to keep your paints a little bit moist rinse and clean your brushes right away if the paint hardens in the brush in the bristles You'll never be able, well, you will be able to get it out, but you could wreck the brush doing it. Um, give it a good wash with some dish soap and water or Murphy's oil soap. If your mom has that, a couple of drops of Murphy oil soap. Make sure you clean off your palette knives and clean up your area. Rinse out your containers and let it all dry. And as you can see, even though this is clean, it has now been stained. It's okay, don't worry about it. Get everything as clean as you can and get ready for next class. So that's it for this class. However, I do want to talk about next week's project. We're going to be doing a still life. So I am going to take a photograph of something around my house that we're going to work on. That video is set for August 14th so I will have the link to the photograph so that you can print it out so you'll have your reference photo as well. Feel free to play with all of your paints during the next three weeks while until we start our next class. You know mix together what happens when you mix orange and blue together? What happens? You need to be able to know what happens when you mix complementary colors. What happens? I mean, I'm doing it right now, but I want you to go and play with them and find out what happens when you mix the complementary colors. Or what happens when you mix 
some of the colors that you've already made. You've made some orange. Let's do that. A little bit of green. What happens when you mix orange and green? What are you getting? What are the results? Are, do you like the colors? Do you not like the colors? Play as much as you want. Paper is relatively cheap. You don't have to use your canvas paper for playing if you don't want to. You can use just regular printer paper or photocopy paper. Um, the paper will buckle. It will make lumps, but that's okay. Um, find out which papers work best for you. You could use some drawing paper. The important thing is to play with the colors and find out what they do when they get together. Because this is how you're going to get a whole bunch of different tones when we're doing, see here I'm just playing with some of the greens in that. You're going to get a whole bunch of different greens for when we do a landscape, when we do fields. You want to know how your paints and your colors are going to work together. And again, as my friend Arlene likes to say, her palette is always a mess. She's always playing with other colors and she just keeps adding colors until she gets the shade that she wants and then she paints with it. I tend to be a little bit more precise. I like to know what exactly I'm doing before I do it, but playing and experimenting with colors is one of the funnest parts of painting with acrylics. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down here so you can follow me on my artful journey with either this class or some of my pouring videos. I also have some real time videos if you're just beginning and you need more hands on help. If you have any questions, put them down in the dibbly doo. I do answer all questions and I love to hear from you. I'll see you later. Bye. So when I was editing the video, I noticed that when I did the black to white, it was a little bit confusing over here on the palette and I wasn't putting them in order right away. And I may have actually confused myself when I did it. So I decided to do it again and focus just on that. So I'm going to flip over the paper and we are going to do this again. So again, white on one side. Rinse, rinse, rinse. I need more paper towel. Make sure you always dab after you rinse. Some pure black on this side. So there we go. We have pure black and pure white. Rinse, 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 dab, dab, dab. So let's make some mid-tone. Make sure I have like even amounts of black and white. And when you mix them, you're trying to get a single color with all of the streaks gone. So you only see one color gray instead of streaks of white and black. So there we go. We have a nice mid-tone gray. So we'll put that one right in the middle. There we go. Perfect. Now we want to create the one that goes between the white and the mid-tone. So what we want to do is take some of the mid-tone over here, and we're going to be doing the same with the black, so we're going to take some of the mid-tone over here, and we're going to mix some more white with this one, about the same amount. Mix that together until there's no streaks. There we go. Oops, I just added streaks. There we go, a nice halfway between the white and the mid-tone. fantastic. Clean the brush, dab the brush. 
wipe off the palette knife. And we're going to take this amount of mid-tone and I'm going to grab the same amount of black and we're going to make between the mid-tone and the black. There we go. Nice. We'll put that in the mid-tone, between the mid-tone and the black. Perfect. Oops, clean, clean, clean. Now, we want to put, now we want to put, yes, so this is the one that is between the white and the mid-tone. So we're going to divide this down and add a little bit more white to it. And this will give us the shade between the white. Oop, it'll go right here. Oop, you can't see that. I have there. It'll be the one that goes right here. Let me turn it this way so it fits a little bit better on the screen. So this goes between here. And now we want to go between this one and the mid-tone. So I'm going to take some more of the mid-tone and some more of the one between the mid-tone and the white. And this one goes between here and here. Now we want to go between, this is the mid-tone, we want to go between the black and the mid-tone. So let's grab a little bit of the mid-tone. You can't see that. There we go. This is the mid-tone. A little bit of black. A little bit more black. Oops. That's too much. That's too much too. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Squish that over here. There we go. This is one of the funnest things about color mixing is just playing with colors. So this is between the black and the mid-tone. And then we want to go from the, uh, sorry, this is between the black. Oh, I did that one wrong. That was the mid-tone, that was the black. That was, that's the black, that's the mid-tone, that one. I already made that one. See, this is where it can get confusing. You have to make sure. So we wanted to go between the black and not the mid-tone. We wanted to go between the black and this one. So that one's wrong. Let's fix that. So this is, the, this, is this one here. So I actually want to put a little pile of that and a little pile of black. So this one goes here, and it's a little bit darker. I don't know if you can see that. And then this is the mid-tone. We want to mix these two together now to get this one. So we'll just mix these two together here. And that goes in between there. 
Okay. So ignoring this one, it starts to lighten, and there you go. Now, this is a very simple value chart. It only has a few. You can break this down to as many, like you could still add more white and get another one here, and like infinite gradations of the grays. Um, but I did, I hope that this actually made more sense. You start with your two paints, you make a mid-tone, and then you mix in the middle here, then mix these two, then in the middle here. Let me know if this made it better or if it made it worse. Because if it made it worse, I will do it again a different way. Maybe even with a different color um, or with a different number of gradations so that you get it. But it's basically, you know, you want to start with your two, mix in the middle, and then start mixing out. If you want, you can create some boxes and number them and maybe you can put numbers beside what you're mixing and i hope this helped so let me know down in the dibbly do if this made it better or worse and i can always do it again i want you to be able to understand how to do gradations without making it painful we want color mixing to be fun so i'll see you later bye